track. Next up, we have a uh, biotech and pharmaceutical track uh, that's uh, led by Dr. Jack Chen. Uh, this year, we have uh, three uh, interns uh, that are participating in this uh, uh, internship. Uh, let's uh, introduce uh, Jimmy Chang, Hannah Wang, and Claire Lee. Uh, they're going to do a group presentation together. So please take it away. So thank you, John. Um, so my name is Jeannie. I'm 20 years old, and I'm an incoming P1, or first-year student pharmacist, at UOP Thomas J. Long School of Pharmacy, and I'm from Walnut, California. I'm um, Claire. I think you're on mute. Sorry. Um, I'm Claire. I'm 19, and I'm going to be a rising junior at Cornell this fall, um, and I'm currently pursuing a Bachelor of Science in Biology and Society, and I am from Palo Alto. Hi, my name is Hannah. I'm 18 years old and I'm currently a rising sophomore at UC Santa Cruz where I'm pursuing a BS, a BS in biology and I'm from Foster City, California. So our goal for this internship track uh, was to become educated on the drug discovery journey from R&D, which is research and development to clinical trials and specifically in the field of oncology. So this is the general process of how we actually carried out the internship during these past couple of months. Uh, the mentor, which was Dr. Chen, and us mentees would meet every other week virtually. And during this meeting, Dr. Chen would introduce a new topic to us and a new assignment. And then we would present the assignment related to the topic from two weeks ago. Then every other off week, meaning every week that we didn't meet with Dr. Chen, uh, we would just meet as a group, meet Claire and Hannah, and we would delegate responsibilities for the assignment. And the assignment could have been a case study, research article, or review paper. And then on our own time, we would work and research individually on uh, the assignment, and we would read and summarize the material on the topic and work collaboratively on this shared slide deck that we would later email to Dr. Chen. Oh, next slide, please. Oh yeah, so in this internship, we learned about three big ideas. The first one being target discovery and validation. The second one being candidate nomination for IND slash FIH. And finally, patient resistance and combination. So like Claire just said, the first big idea that we discuss in this internship, which is also the first step in the drug discovery process is target discovery and validation. Next slide, please. So the first topic within this big idea was about the differences between three common cancer treatments, chemotherapy, targeted therapy, and immunotherapy. So uh, chemotherapy, it, its mechanism or how it works is that it moves through the bloodstream to kill cancer. The majority of chemotherapy attacks vital DNA structures within cancer cells and ones that are rapidly dividing by inhibiting the splitting of cells. And this affects both healthy and cancer cells. The chemotherapy can target cancers, oh, sorry. Yeah, chemotherapy can target cancers that can't be detected directly by the doctor since it moves through the bloodstream and blood moves throughout the body. So it can be used for a range of treatments. However, the side effects can include hair loss, intestinal damage, and anemia since this, these systems um, involve rapidly dividing cells. So the next one is target therapy. Targeted therapy targets proteins that control how cancer cells grow, divide, and spread by delivering drugs to particular genes or proteins. Targeted therapy is typically more effective, it is typically quicker, and therefore easier than the alternative methods, and it is also less harmful to normal cells. Um, given these conveniences, it can increase the quality of the patient's life. However, patients can acquire possible resistance to molecular targeted drugs, and the side effects can include liver problems, diarrhea, and skin rashes, among other things, and it cannot be used on all cancers. Next slide, please. And the last one is immunotherapy, which boosts the body's immune system to fight cancer. Immunotherapy is generally effective for a long time. However, it comes at a high price, uh, meaning it's very expensive. And its side effects can include flu-like symptoms, general aches and pains, organ inflammation, and many others. Next slide, please. So the next topic that we discussed were the ways that technology can help to enhance the drug discovery process. Uh, so of course, AI or artificial intelligence. We found three ways that AI can be helpful. Uh, AI can be used to shorten the timeline, um, the, meaning the time it takes for the drug to go from R&D to treatment in patients by making the drug discovery process more streamlined. An example of this is that um, AI can help predict toxic side effects of certain compounds, which is usually very time consuming. AI can also be used to reduce the cost of drug development. An example of this is also toxicity optimization. 
which means finding the appropriate dose for a drug before it becomes toxic. Um, this process is also usually very expensive, so being able to automate it is much cheaper. And AI can be used to help increase the approval rate, which means how likely a drug will be approved by the FDA. This is important because 86% of clinical trials actually fail to recruit sufficient patients. Therefore, AI can help researchers match patients to the correct clinical trial to make sure the first patients to try the drug actually fit the profile of the drug to reduce any unknown variables that may cause a drug to be less effective or even ineffective. Uh, the next one is CRISPR. CRISPR is a gene editing tool used to modify, delete, or correct specific regions within our DNA. CRISPR can be used in many ways in a lab. Uh, an example of CRISPR in vitro, and in vitro means an experiment performed outside of a living organism, is CRISPR screening. CRISPR screening basically edits genes by precisely cutting DNA and then letting natural DNA repair processes take over. An example of CRISPR in vivo, which means an experiment inside a living organism, um, CRISPR is actually able to identify a target gene in a specific tumor that scientists are able to develop drugs for to help fight cancer and other diseases as well. And the last topic in this big topic, big idea, is target validation. Target validation basically means making sure the target will actually be affected by the drug. And for this topic, we actually each found a scientific journal that shows target validation, but I'm just going to focus on this one study. So HER2, or Human Epidermal Growth Factor 2, in CRC, which stands for colorectal cancer, um, HER2 is often overexpressed, meaning there's too much of it in CRC, which CRC is typically a very deadly form of cancer. However, it was found that utilizing a special form of immunotherapy, targeting HER2 and removing it can help to reduce the size of CRC tumors. So as you can see, I have a picture on the right. Both groups of mice were infected with CRC and expressed high levels of HER2 on the surface of their tumors. So the left side of the picture is the control group, and you can see it. I have an X treatment there. Um, this means that the mice were not treated with, it, with anything. Well, the right side shows the experimental group that was treated with the immunotherapy. So that's where there's a check treatment. And on the bottom of the treatment, there are two uh, the tumors of from the mice, and it's placed next to a ruler. But don't worry about not being able to see the numbers because you can see that um, the tumors from the mice that weren't treated with anything are substantially greater than from than the tumors from the mice that were treated with the immunotherapy. So thus, you can conclude that HER2 in this case was validated, the target, since it was able to shrink the size of the CRC tumor when it was inhibited. Therefore, you can also say that the drug works for its intended purpose. So I'm going to be talking about the second big idea, which is candidate nomination for IND slash FIH. So there's three, three main parts to this. Uh, the first one being hit identification. So that's basically when uh, scientists identify a molecule with confirmed activity against a biological pro product. So this leads to a bunch of specific targets, which can be the starting point for um, potential compounds. So once you have these potential compounds, oops, sorry. <laughs> once you have these potential compounds, um, it goes to lead optimization, which is basically a process that selects for the most promising candidates you identified previously for the later uh, stages of drug development. So the goal of this entire process is to identify molecules that can potentially interact with the target to create desired biological effects, for example, like as medicine. So there are three main steps to this. The first one being uh, identifying the molecules through specific screening criteria. So this can be done through monoclonal antibodies, chemical libraries, um, or fragment-based techniques. So once this happens, uh, scientists then determine the structure activity relationships of the compounds. Uh, for example, how like the compound interacts with receptors or whichever target you are um, looking for. And finally, uh, this leads to preclinical tests, which can be conducted in vivo uh, or in other organisms, for example, mice or other animals, or in vitro, which is done outside like a body, for example, in a 3D cell assay. The goal of the preclinical test is to basically accurately model and predict treatment outcome in patients um, and basically to characterize the toxicities associated with the drug to make it more safe in human testing. So the objectives of the candidates you're selecting um, so scientists are looking for things that have great absorption, ability to be metabolized, distributed, and executed from the body, as well as um, their ability to pass early cytotoxicity and genotoxicity tests, meaning that they don't disrupt the cell's DNA or kill the cells. So once all this is done, uh, the candidate can then be nominated for IND slash FIH. So IND is basically 
stands for investigational new drug, while FIH stands for first in human. So what is an IND? Um, it basically is a document that scientists submit to the FDA um, as a result of successful preclinical trials and contains information about animal toxicology, manufacturing information, clinical protocols, and investigator information. As mentioned before, the drug is submitted to the FDA via the IND to be reviewed, and once it's approved, the clinical trials can begin. So there are three main phases of the clinical trials, uh, which are performed in humans. The first one being safety. So this takes about 20 to 100 healthy volunteers and provides information about absorption and metabolism, um, as well as side effects on organs and tissues, as these volunteers are healthy and basically any side effect can be traced back to the drug. So the second phase is efficacy, and that's when uh, the test moves on to several hundred patients with the disease, and this tests the effectiveness of the compound in actually treating the disease, uh, short-term side effects, as well as possible dose ranges. And finally, the third phase, um, in the third phase, the trials expand to thousands of patients, and this gives um, more information about the benefit versus risk, uh, longer-term side effects, as well as like confirming the effectiveness of the drug in fighting the disease. And finally, it, label, it provides labeling info that can help patients uh, choose which medicine is right for them. So the next part of my presentation talks about endpoints, and basically an endpoint is a characteristic that scientists assign to basically learn more about the drug and determine how safe it is. So there are three main point, three main types, the first one being a primary endpoint. So this consists of like the outcome or outcomes that establish the effectiveness and or safety features of the drug. So in this experiment, um, the scientists tested the safety of this new immunotherapy uh, using adverse events, which can be highlighted in the graph. And um, they basically found that there were a bunch of uh, treatment related adverse events. However, there weren't any deaths. So they used that information to characterize the safety of their drug accordingly. And the secondary endpoint is selected to demonstrate additional effects after the success of the primary endpoint. So in this scenario, um, using the same immunotherapy, uh, the scientists assess um, basically the ability of the substance to provoke an immune response and how it moves within the body. So this graph highlights the change in tumor size after different dosages and um, treatment schedules of um, the drug. So you can see that some cause like greater uh, tumor shrinkage while others have less of an effect. So scientists use this information to see how to treat the patients. And finally, this, uh, table, this diagram shows the exploratory endpoint, which is basically um, characteristics that can be used for future direction slash reference. So in this experiment, the endpoints specifically were PD-1 receptor occupancy and um, basically analyzing the biological activity of the drug in both the blood and tumor biopsy samples. So you can tell in this diagram that the two arrows uh, point to the tumor cell, both pretreatment and on treatment. And um, the bottom row is basically like the immune cell. And um, like after treatment, both the PDL, like both the cancer, the tumor cell and the immune cells have greater PDL1 receptivity, which they're testing for. Um, while pre treatment, only the immune cell has greater PDL1 receptivity. And the third and final big topic that we covered was patient resistance and combination. So, why do cancer treatments stop working? One answer is going to be patient resistance, which occurs when cancer cells containing molecular mechanisms that make them insensitive to a particular drug. This may increase drug resistance and it allows the cancer cells to escape a lot of the drug's effects. And cancer cells can achieve this drug resistance through multiple mechanisms, which include the inactivation of the drug, apoptosis suppression. Apoptosis is also known as programmed cell death metabolic changes, which can increase drug inhibition and degradation, as well as changes in the tumor microenvironment. So to help visualize this, um, we see three different figures here, and the different cell types are indicated in the key above. So we have before treatment, responding to treatment, and developing drug resistance. Before treatment, tumors consist of cancer cells with different molecular features, which may make them sensitive or resistant to different types of treatment. And as the patient is responding to the treatment, 
Um, although a drug may kill the drug-sensitive cancer cells, we see that the resistant cells will still survive, shown as the red cells. Um, and finally, under developing drug resistance, these cancer cells that are resistant will continue to multiply, which will contribute to the regrowth of the tumor. So one big question researchers are trying to answer is how can we overcome this treatment resistance? And one promising solution is combination treatment, which is the combination of drug, cancer drugs that work by different molecular mechanisms. Scientists are developing different methods to discover and test these novel drug combinations. And if successful, it could potentially transform cancer treatment uh, for many patients. And some advantages to this combination treatment method is an increase in tumor cell killing, decrease in drug resistance, as well as a decrease in toxicity. So one case study of a combination treatment is the combination of LY3009120, which is a PANRAF inhibitor, and a vimacyclib, but we can just refer to them as compound A and compound B, respectively. So this combination of these two compounds creates a synergistic effect. Um, and so the graph shows the tumor volume over time. And what we can see from these results is that the green line representing this combination treatment between compound A and compound B shows a significant decrease in the tumor volume, meaning the combination treatment is the most effective in anti-tumor growth activities as well as tumor growth regression compared to just comp compound A or just compound B. So what we've learned from this internship, we've learned a lot, I think all of us can say, but um, one of the biggest things is uh, we first were educated on the complexity of the drug discovery path. We also learned about drug research as a career. We also learned how to critically read information and scientific articles, and finally, how to work collaboratively on challenging topics. And as for final thoughts, the process of a drug from research and development to clinical trial proved to be a lot more complicated and interesting than we all initially thought. And we thank Dr. Chen, our mentor, for providing us with all the resources as well as the guidance to educate us on this forever expanding topic. And we thank you for listening to our presentation. Wow, thank you, Jeannie. Thank you, Claire. Thank you, Hannah. That was really uh information rich uh, presentation. I'm sure everyone who has uh, gone through your presentation has uh, appreciate much more about the medical field and the medicine that we take uh, because it goes through a uh, complex and detailed and long process uh, to be able to uh, prove that the drug works. So thank you so much.